In this video, we're going to show you how to install an axle on your Ford Mustang located in the rear differential of your vehicle. Using a 19 millimeter socket, loosen and remove your lug nuts. Grab the wheel, remove it, and set it aside. On the back side of your brake caliper, there's gonna be two 14 millimeter bolts for the slide pins, one here, one on the top. We're gonna to use our gear wrench. I wanna loosen these. Use a small pry bar and work your caliper off. I wanna go ahead and use a tool here, a hanging tool to go ahead and support the caliper up and out of the way. On the back side of our caliper bracket, there's gonna be two 15 millimeter bolts. Use your ratchet. Go ahead and loosen those. We want to loosen these and remove the bolts. Keep in mind, these two bolts are holding the caliper bracket in place. So when you remove the second bolt, support the caliper bracket so it doesn't fall. Go ahead and remove the caliper bracket and your pads, set those aside. Remove the brake rotor, set that aside. On our rear cover here, we wanna go ahead and remove the half inch bolts all the way around the perimeter. Now we're gonna leave the three loose on the top and we're gonna remove the rest here. That's gonna allow us to go ahead and pop open the cover and let that gear oil come out. Now we do have a catch can underneath here. This here is an identification tag for this rear differential. We're gonna reinstall that. Now for clearance issues, my impact driver was hitting the gas tank skid plate. So we're just gonna loosen these up with our ratchet just a little bit further. Now I wanna go ahead and break the seal on the differential cover. I'm gonna use a small pry bar. And peel that. Go ahead and remove your differential tag here. Now the majority of that gear oil drained out, go ahead and remove the remaining three bolts. Hold that cover in place for that last one. And then go ahead and grab that cover and pluck that off and set that aside. Now in our, inside of our rear carrier unit here, we need to access our axle shaft that runs through the housing here and into the middle. Now we need to go ahead and rotate this unit so we can gain access to the other side of this that has a bolt in it, because we need to remove this pin running through the middle. Now with the vehicle in neutral, grab that drive shaft and spin that. Now right on the top here is the bolt that we need to remove. Now this goes through and intersects with this pin right in the center here, locking that into place. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove this pin. We're gonna use our 5 16 wrench on this bolt here. Now 
And you want to pay attention to this pin in the middle here. Once this bolt comes out, this chances are this pin could slide right out and fall out and your spider gears will be loose. So you want to be careful with that. There's going to be a limited amount of space that you'll be able to get this pin out in. So what we're going to do is see it's hitting the, car the cap right here. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this up so we can get that bolt out through the side. In this case here, our pin just dropped out. You can leave the bolt in here if you want. It's not critical to have to remove that as long as we can get this, get this pin out here. I'm gonna rotate this here, slide this pin out. Now our axle shaft comes through the housing here and it comes through the middle of this spider gear right here. And this is the axle itself. Now this vehicle has ABS brakes on it. And the reason why I'm telling you that is that we cannot push our axle in far enough. So if we pull it out, you can see it go in and come back in, out, in. Well, we can only push it in so far because our ABS speed sensor is in the way. If you do not have ABS brakes on your vehicle, this axle shaft will come in far enough where you'll go ahead and remove the little C-clip here. Our next step is to go to the wheel end and remove the ABS speed sensor. On the back side of our brake shield here, our dust shield, here's your ABS sensor right here. And it's held in place by an inverted uh, number eight Torx bit. So I'm gonna put that socket on there. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a few taps. and remove that bolt and set it aside. Now I'm gonna grab this with a pair of pliers. I'm gonna gently just try and rock this back and forth. Now they are brittle, they can crack. So you just wanna be careful trying to break that free. Now we went ahead and soaked down our sensor here with some penetrant and some lube to try and work this out. You gotta be super careful working these sensors out. and twist it back and forth and work that out. Now with that sensor removed, we can push in on the axle itself from the stud side, and you're gonna watch the axle come in. Here it is right there. Here's a C-clip. Here it is. So remove that. Now if we grab that axle and just gently pull it, we can work that axle out of the tube. Grab your axle from the outside here and pull it. And set it aside. We want to remove our outer axle seal as well as the bearing inside. And install our tool. And just work on this here, pulling that bearing out. Now where a slide hammer is not working at pulling out the bearing and the seal, usually the seal pops out with the bearing. We're gonna go ahead and remove our tool here, remove the seal using a seal puller or something to that effect. And then we're going to attempt to get that bearing out another way. But you just wanna work at that, you can get a tool to remove that bearing from the axle tube. So we had to pry ours out and cut it to get it separated from the axle tube. We're gonna hook up our slide hammer again and work again on that bearing. Here we have it, just got our bearing out. Now our axle seal was leaking differential oil earlier, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna stuff a rag in here and we're gonna spray this down with some solvent and we wanna clean this. I'm gonna pull this rag out, we're gonna spray some of the solvent on the rag. And now we wanna clean the inside here where the bearing is going to 
get installed into. Inspect the inside of the axle tube, make sure there's no burrs or defects in here and everything looks good. I'm gonna put some oil on the inside of the bearing area here. I'm gonna go ahead and tap our bearing into place. I'm gonna line our bearing up inside here. I'm gonna use our bearing driver and tap this in. Now we have the bearing going in. We're gonna keep on tapping it in and you're gonna hear an audible change once that bearing is fully seated. The key to this here is making sure that it goes in evenly as you're putting this in. Our bearing is fully seated all the way in. Let's go ahead and install our seal and line up our seal here. And this is another critical one here, getting it started and going in evenly. There it is, just recessed beyond the lip there. What I'm going to do is take some differential oil and pour it in on that bearing and go ahead and rotate that bearing all the way around. Coat that bearing up nice inside, getting some of the oil on the seal itself as well. Let's now go ahead and grab our axle and slide that into place. And take that axle, slide this in. Now you wanna kind of hold the axle up, don't drag it across that seal. And you're gonna lift up the axle on the other end by the hub here so you can feed it through the bearing on the inside. There it is, and slide that in. Now at this point here, we need to go to the differential in the middle. And as we insert this here, we need to slide the gear back onto the splines on our axle here. Now we're gonna grab the axle on the outside by the wheel and push it in. And there is our axle right there poking through. Install a C-clip and then grab that axle and pull it back out. And that locks it into place. Now at this point, we can rotate our spider gears with our axle. Now on your spider gears, there was a little shim here. Make sure that that is on there when you're reassembling this unit. It is very, very important. Now we're gonna rotate this here until the center lines up with the hole in both the top and bottom here. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit with the drive shaft and continue to rotate that axle. And what we need to do is line it up so we can get our pin through the center. Don't forget you have to have the hole in the top for our pin here to go through. Rotate the drive shaft, and then we can do the gears here. And there it goes. So when I install this, my one of my carrier gears is off one tooth. So you have to continue this process here of trying to get this to line up. I have to pull the pin back out. Now I repositioned this here. So let's see if we can get that to line up. And now the pin goes in, so that's good. Get this pin lined up. Now before I put this in, I do wanna clean this and I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on those threads. We have our blue Loctite on the pin. Let's go ahead and thread that in. I'll make sure that that is good and tight. We wanna clean our surface here. Get this ready for our new gasket material. I'm gonna use some 400 grit sandpaper just to try and clean this up a little bit.
You can use a regular gasket scraper if you want, but this here is a steel differential. So you can go ahead and apply some light pressure with the sandpaper to clean that up. Now, if you have leftover gasket material, just go ahead and use your gasket scraper to clean that up. Make sure this is free of any oils and grease. Now let's go ahead and clean up our differential cover. Now on our differential cover here, you wanna be careful with this. This is aluminum, but we are gonna use our razor blade. And you just wanna clean off the old gasket material. We don't wanna take any gouges out of the aluminum, but you are just gonna keep that razor blade at an angle here and just gonna run around and clean this up. You wanna prevent any gouges from happening into that aluminum. It's pretty forgiving, but you wanna be careful with that. Once you get your gasket material off, go ahead and use some solvent, clean off the surface. You can use a mild 400 grit sandpaper and go ahead and clean the surface as well. Make sure there's a nice clean mating surface for installation. Now go ahead and use the solvent, clean this up. You can follow up with a little bit of light sanding on this here, spray it in with some solvent and get it ready for installation. Once you have that gasket surface all cleaned up, spray it one last time with that solvent. Make sure that surface is clean. We are ready for installation. Now we're gonna use a black RTV on our cover here. I wanna run a thin bead all the way around. And once you have that bead run around, I'd like to go ahead and smear it evenly. You want this to create a nice, even gasket surface. But it doesn't have to be super thick. You just wanna make sure that it's a nice, thin, even coating. And once you're satisfied with the coating, we can go ahead and line this up and start getting our bolts back in. I like to give this probably about three to four minutes to start to cure and then we'll pop that onto our differential. Now in sticking the diff cover up over the rear end here, make sure that this raised bump is over the ring gear here. If you put over this way here, well, it's not gonna fit. So go ahead and line this up, set it into place. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple bolts and start them in at the top. Once you have those in, you can go ahead and let go of that cover and just get all the other ones started by hand. Don't forget your differential ID tag. Go ahead and gently snug these down. Now that we have the snug, let's go ahead and torque these down to 32 foot-pounds.
Now when using RTV for your gasket, ideally you wanna let it set up and cure for about an hour before you add fluid to the rear differential. I'm gonna install your ABS sensor. I did take a rag and clean off the end of this here. It is magnetic. So just wipe it down, clean off any debris that might be on there. Go ahead and line that up and work that back in. Install the bolt. Now the ABS sensor has a little brass insert or a sleeve. So once that bolt bottoms out, you just gently want to snug it. So it's bottomed out right there, just a little bit more. And your ABS sensor is installed. Now on the front side of our differential right here is the fill plug. So we're gonna go ahead and use our 3 8 ratchet. We wanna go ahead and loosen and remove this plug. Now we're gonna put our differential fluid into here. Now our differential does not require a friction modifier for this Ford differential. You may wanna research your rear end on this vehicle to make sure that you do or do not need it. If it does require it, you have to put it in, otherwise you can ruin the rear differential. Make sure you use the appropriate gear oil as well, recommended by Ford Motor Company for this vehicle. Now what we're gonna do is continue to fill this until the differential fluid just starts to come out through this port here. Now we can see the differential fluid starting to come out. And at this point here, you need to take your plug now this is a magnetic pickup. You can clean that with a rag. And simply install the plug. You wanna make sure this is good and tight. that up. I'm going to go ahead and throw a lug nut on. That keeps the rotor from coming loose like that. Next we want to install our caliper bracket. To reposition our hanger here. Line up the bracket. And we did put some blue anti-seize compound on the threads for these bolts. Get these bolts started. Torque down our caliper bracket bolts to 76 foot pounds. And you want to go ahead and install this into place. I'm going to do the same for the outboard pad. Now 
Now that we have both of our pads into our caliper bracket, we'll go ahead and bring our caliper up. We're gonna remove our securing strap here. I'm gonna bring this up and over. Now on our sliders, there's gonna be two flat sections. I like to have those almost horizontal with the floor. And what I'm gonna do is line up the top one as well. I'm gonna get the upper bolt installed first. Once we have that upper one installed, we can go ahead and push down. Go ahead and push down on the caliper and work that down and in. Now we have spring tension here on the backside of our pads, as well as our emergency brake cable kind of applying pressure. It makes it tough for us to get that lower bolt in. Now the top bolt is in, that works as our hinge point. We're gonna get that bolt set in there. And I'm just gonna use a pry bar go between the caliper and the hard line right here and just gently bring this down and into place. Go ahead and get that bolt started. Get it in on several threads. Let's go ahead and snug those down. And go ahead and snug these down. Good and torque down these bolts to 28 foot pounds. Install your wheel. Gonna go ahead and install your lug nuts. We'll start them all by hand. Once you have those all started, go ahead and snug them down. Now you can lower the vehicle down to the ground and torque them to spec. Let's go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 95 foot pounds. Once you have those torqued, go ahead and install the center cap here. Line up the holes with the lug nuts and tap it on. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.